So you want to make a circle. Yeah, that's it. Just a circle. You're not trying to make squares, okay? Because squares are, are four squares. They're Squaresville. Circles are much more rounded, and they don't have corners. Hey guys, welcome back to Spy Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender 2.8 once again, taking a look at something I've kind of done before. I've done it in the past, uh, I believe actually twice, but that was a long, long time ago. It's it's kind of outdated now. Some things are a little different, just the GUI way it looks. I figure I might as well knock one out the park for 2.8. Uh, one right now. So we're gonna go ahead and delete on default cube. I'm sorry We're gonna go ahead and hit shift a to add in a plane. That's right a plane We're gonna start off with a flat square. Well a square is flat a cube is you know what I mean um, I'm gonna hit rx 90 on my numpad and left click to confirm that Minimum mouse button to pan around my scene here. I'm gonna hit tab to go into edit mode I'm gonna go over to the loop cut and then loop cut once there in the center right there and then uh, loop cut once in the uh, in the middle right here. So we have four squares now. I'm gonna go back to select mode, which is this one right, this little box up at the top. Now we have uh, like a little cross, like a little window, which looks pretty cool. We don't need anything except for these two vertices right here. So I'm gonna hold down shift and select all of these vertices in a U shape. So hold down shift, select all of these right here. Boom, 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 boom. Hit delete vertices now if you zoom in close you see we have this vertice right here and also if we hold down shift and click this one we have those two so now we have two vertices kind of just standing straight up like that that's all we did that for just so they're sh completely straight because that's what we need then i'm gonna go ahead and go out of edit mode by hitting tab again so we go out of it um, and then go to the modifiers tab here hit add modifier and we're gonna go ahead and find screw now screw is going to create this nice little effect here um, but you see it's kind of jagged and you can you can leave it like that if you want to but I'm gonna recommend you turn the steps up um, by uh, by resolutions of of 16 so 16 or 32 or 64 or 1 or 128 or uh, you know anything else uh, I think the highest you probably should go is probably 128 512 you can't even really tell the difference so 128 is probably good you can zoom in you really still can't see the edges of the choppiness and whatnot so now that we got that done I'm gonna open up my timeline here and change my start frame to zero because that bugs me I'm gonna go to the zero frame and go to angle and hit I hover my cursor over top of angle and hit the I key on my keyboard and then we go to frame about 50 and then change the angle to zero hit zero uh, just click in there hit zero on my key on my keyboard and then hit enter now it disappeared it's gone where'd it go oh my god i can't believe it we're gonna hover our cursor over top of angle and hit i so now there's you know now we've entered another keyframe so that means we've inserted a keyframe on zero and 50 now if we play this you can see what happens is it kind of goes away like a little pie chart which is kind of cool so what i want to do is i want to make it appear and then reappear so i'm going to take this first keyframe over here on zero and hit G to move this to frame 100, right? And then I'm going to grab uh, that same frame, uh, the frame 100, hit Shift D to duplicate it, and then move it to frame 150, and then grab the keyframe that's on 50, which is right here, hit Shift D, and put that on 200. Now, I'm going to hit B to box, select all these keyframes, and hit G to move them all the way over to zero, right there. So the first one's on zero. So now if we play this, it looks like this. It comes up. It stays for 50 frames and it goes down, which is super cool, right? Now, something that we can do to make it not go down like this way, we could actually, um, if you if you tell, you can see if, if I were to scrub this the other direction, it works that way too. So we can actually invert this value right here, this value on 150. Uh, instead, actually, sorry, instead of this value being uh, 160, it could be negative 160. But you can see, if I hover my cursor over that I, you can see in the middle here, it's going to do this really weird scrubby thing. So what I'm going to do is is make this happen extremely quick. So I'm going to go one frame behind the frame we just put the negative sign in front of, which is 99. And then I'm going to change this to 360, hit enter, and then hit I on my keyboard. So now uh, it kind of pops, it kind of pops in, but it's only one frame, so you can't even see, see that it flips. You see over here, it's changing from, from regular to negative on, in one frame, so you can't see anything happening so now what happens is this it comes up that way and it goes down the other way 
so perfect you can't even tell what we did now i'm going to change my in frame to 150 instead of 250 uh and now you can actually go ahead and go to the scene tab the scene tab here and change the frame rate to 60 if you want that smooth motion graphic fluidity like that gorgeous yes wonderful i'm also going to make our in frame 160 instead of 150 so a 10 frame buffer there um, which is nice all right so i can turn my overlays off and whatnot and you see it's very nice so um, I kind of want to smooth this out just a little bit. So, what I'm going to do is on this first one, I'm not going to smooth the second one because it's the same process. But right here, on frame 50, it gets 100% to 360. I don't want it to do that. I want I want it to like smooth into stopping. So, instead of just like hard stopping on, on frame 50 like that. So, I'm going to go to frame 80. Hover my cursor over top of angle and hit I to insert 360. And then back on frame 50, I want to smooth it out a little bit. So I'm going to change the angle from 360 to 350. And then hit hover my cursor over top of that angle and hit I. So now it does this. So it smooths its way down instead of just hard stopping right there. Which looks much better. And it will be the same process for this over here. So I'm, I'll do it. Why not? Um, so instead of ending on zero, what I want to do is I want to go ahead by, what is that, uh, 30 frames here. So we're going to go 180, hover our cursor over our angle, hit I, and then go back to 150 and change this to 10. I believe that's correct, right? Or negative 10, is it? Yeah, it's negative 10. So we're going to change it to negative 10 instead of 10. I, and now when we play this, it looks like this. Smooth and smooth. Which is just looks so much better than the hard stopping that it was originally at. So this could be a, a thing for a clock. It could be just regular motion graphics. It could be anything. This is a great, like, if you put this down at the bottom of the screen, that could be a great, like, loading menu icon, right? So you put that right there. Super awesome thing. Uh, great little, little tidbit right there. So... Hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed today's tutorial. Really simple motion graphic, but I just love the way it looks. It's very smooth, very clean, very nice. Can be used for so many different things, like I said. Loading screen, clock, just motion graphic in general. Uh, I love it so much. So, hope you loved it as much as I did. I will see you in the next one, but until then, bye-bye.